We are in the 12 week year. Uh, I've noticed on Facebook, a few of you have bought the book. Good for you. I am so happy uh, that you've done that. Uh, and if you haven't, please add this to your reading list. Today, I want to talk to you about confronting the truth. So I'm going to start with a question. Uh, can you imagine people, fans, coming to watch you work? Paying for the privilege to see you in action. What would that look like? Would they do it? What would they see if they did? Now, one of the key reasons sports are so stimulating is we keep score. You've heard me share with you before that I don't think anybody has not heard me say this. Uh, I love football. I mean, it don't matter who's playing. I'm going to turn the game on and, and, and watch the game. I mean, it could be the Rams playing the Billy Goats. And I'm turning on that game and I'm watching the game because I love football. Now, here's the thing. If you took away the scoreboard, I would be pretty bored. I would not really enjoy watching the game. I don't think I'd even enjoy playing the game without the scoreboard. The scoreboard makes it fun. One of the key reasons sports are so stimulating is that we keep score. Now, I started out by asking you, can you imagine people, fans, coming to watch you work, paying for the privilege to see you in action? And if they did, do you have a scoreboard? Could they watch the scoreboard in order to see how you were doing? Do you have a scoreboard that you watch, that you pay attention to? At any point dur during a sporting event, every player, coach, and fan know exactly where their team stands. So can you imagine Tom Brady going to the sideline and the coach saying, how much time is left in the game? What's the score? How are we doing? And Tom Brady saying, I don't know, coach, hold on just a moment. Let me look at the scoreboard. Let me, you know, because I kind of don't know. Now, here's the interesting thing. I, I, I talk to a lot of real estate agents. I, I meet with an average of 50 real estate agents a month. And at least 90% of the agents that I talk to have no idea where they stand. They're not paying attention to the score. They don't even know how they did last year. So Clarissa, tell me how, how's things going? How was 2021? And Clarissa would know the score, but I just picked her name because she's sitting right next to me. And let's just pretend she's a real estate agent from another firm and we're having a conversation. And I asked her, so how are things going? How is 2021? And you would expect that most real estate agents are going to be able to say, I closed this many units. I closed this much in volume. This was my GCI. This is how many listings that I took. This is how many listing appointments that I went on. These are all what? They're all stats, short statistics. And it's not just the score of the game that keeps us interested in the game. It's all those stats like total yards rushing, total yards passing, uh, how many plays we've run, right? Uh, time of possession. I mean, they keep a stat on everything in the NFL. Trust me, if they could keep a stat on how many beers you bought, they would. Um, they probably yes. should. <laughs> okay, funny trail. They probably do. You just don't know about it. Yeah, there you go, Carolyn. They probably do. You're right about that. What's my point? Well, what are your stats? What are you paying attention to? What's on your scoreboard? And are you paying attention? According to industrial psychologists, the top two motivators in business are achievement and recognition. Now, when I read that, I got the recognition part. I mean, Michelle, I got, do I recognize my agents? 
I mean, if I were to ask, there are 17 of you in Zoom and half a dozen in the room. If I were to ask you guys, how do I do, how am I doing when it comes to recognition? Am I doing okay? Scale of one to 10, one being I suck, and 10 being you feel like I'm doing a pretty good job of recognizing you guys. Good job. Awesome work. Great, great listing there, Clarissa. Now go do it again. <laughs> right? And I get it. I get it for me, right? Because I have people who recognize me as a team leader for Keller Williams Coral Springs, Gary Keller, everybody at Keller Williams Realty International, Alan Waxman, all of the people who are part of the Waxman group, right? Here's the part I had a challenge with, achievement. If achievement drives you, how do you know if you're achieving? Good question, right? Mm -hmm. Well, here's the answer. The only way to know if you are achieving is through measurement. That is keeping score. So how often do you look at your scoreboard? What are the stats that drive your business? Now, Focus on the activities, not the results. So achievement starts with what is work? Work is 20 conversations, not 19, not 18, not 17, because if I have 17 conversations, I didn't have the 18th conversation, which could have been a million dollar listing that I didn't get because I didn't have the conversation. So how many conversations I have in a day is going to be something that I pay attention to. It's a stat. Uh, how many people did I add to my database? It's a stat. Now, if the standard is one a day or five a week, and I'm working 20, 20 days a, a month, at the end of the month, I should have how many people added to the database? 20. 20. And if I had 18, that's 90% of goal. Yes or yes? Yes. 90% in school is what grade? A. A, I'm doing good. I'm okay. Now, if I have 16, what's my score? Just drop down to a B. That's a B, right? If I have 14, that's a C. If I've added 12, that's a D. And if I've added 10, that's an F. I'm failing. Am I achieving? Say no. You starting to get how you're going to know if you're achieving or not? Pay attention to the score. First of all, in order to pay attention to the score, you got to know, you got to keep score. In order to keep score, you have to know, okay, this is what I'm going to track. I'm going to track conversations. I'm going to track how many people I've added to my database. I'm going to track handwritten personal notes. If my standard is five a day or 25 a week, let's make it four a day and 20 a week. At the end of the month, I've mailed 80 handwritten personal notes. Yes or yes? Yes. Now, if I've actually mailed 72, I'm 90% of goal. That's an A, right? Okay. So handwritten personal notes is something else that I'm going to track. Appointments with people who are thinking of selling their home. What is work? Find somebody today that is thinking of selling their home, whether it's 30 days from now, six months from now, or a year from now, doesn't matter because I'm looking for opportunity period, not just opportunity right now. And when I find somebody who's thinking of selling their home, I'm going to meet face to face with them in order to build a relationship and in order to add them to my pipeline. And when I find one person every day to add to my pipeline at the end of the year, I've added 250. At the end of the month, I've added 20. Now, at the end of the month, if I've met with 18, how am I doing? Yeah, Today, I'm doing good. So meet with how many appointments did I go on? How many people did I meet with that are thinking of selling their home? All right, you guys starting to get it. These are the things that I would keep score on. By the way, everything I gave you, is it an activity or a result? Activity. activity. Now, here's how you know if you're achieving. When you're scoring 85% or higher, you're achieving. Please write it down. 
When you are scoring 85% or higher, you are achieving. At the end of the month, if you scored an 85%, you won the month. Win the day, win the week, win the month. Now, in a 12-week year, the year is 12 weeks long. We don't have a 52-week long year. That's the whole idea behind the book. The year is only 12 weeks. So every 12 weeks, when you are at 85% of your goal, you won the year. You do that time after time after time after time, you're gonna build a really big and really successful real estate business. Score 85 out of 100 or higher. Now, in order to do this, you've gotta keep score. That's a key factor in this working. Scorekeeping functions as a reality check. Providing performance feedback and insight into your effectiveness. You can't ignore the scoreboard. The scoreboard doesn't care about emotion. It doesn't care about intention. The scoreboard is just going to feed you facts. It's data-driven and you can't ignore the scoreboard. Effectiveness, effective measurement removes emotion from the, from the evaluation process and paints an honest picture of your performance. Effective measurement removes emotion from the evaluation process and paints an honest picture of your performance. The data is not concerned with effort or intentions. It simply focuses on outcomes. <clears throat> the sooner we confront reality, the sooner we can shift our actions towards producing more desirable results. Keep doing what you've been doing. You're going to keep getting what you've been getting. A year from now, you are going to be exactly where you are today. You will be. It's called coasting, floating with the, with, uh, with the current. You're going to be downstream with everybody else who floats downstream. Downstream leads to mediocrity. A year from now, unless you change, you're gonna be downstream in mediocrity with everybody else who's in mediocrity. Or worst case, you're gonna be out of the business. I'm on a South Florida leadership call yesterday and Talk about keeping score. Boy, they keep score of everything we do, everything, right? And, and one of the things that every, there's 34 Keller Williams offices in the South Florida region. One of the things that every one of those offices is struggling with right now is uh, retention, okay? And, and here's why. Market shifts. And are we in a market shift? Say yes. Yes. Okay. Market shifts reveal the frauds. Don't get mad at me. That wasn't me who said that. It was Gary Keller. <laughs> market shifts reveal the frauds. And in market shifts, in other words, let me explain that. So you guys have heard all ships rise and fall with rising tides. It's BS. It's not true. It's not true. The market could be super hot and I'm doing really, really well. Matter of fact, I could say, Miguel, I'm excited. Holy cow, my sales are up 5% over last year. So how am I doing? Am I doing good? The answer should be, it depends. I was gonna say it depends. And Ashley, you nailed it. Not if the market has improved by 20%. If the market's improved by 20% and my sales have improved by 5%, the market is actually outpacing me by 
all ships rise and fall with rising tides, not true. Rising tides, the market's up by 20%. I'm only up by 5%. There's other ships that are higher than me. Now, let's talk about that in reverse. The market drops by 20%, like it has year to date in Coral Springs Parkland. For closed units, sales are down by 20%. Now, your office, Keller Williams Coral Springs, is actually up year over year by 5%. Now, 5% to me, not a great number. But 5% when the market's down by 20% means we're outperforming the market by 25%. Tide is down, Keller Williams Coral Springs is up. All ships do not rise and fall with rising tides. Now here's the thing about gaining market share. When you gain market share, you'll never give it back. You guys follow me? So the Deets team in 2005, prior to the market shifting, we were not in the top 100 agents in our market. I mean, we were doing good, but we were not in the top 100. No worries. If you looked at the top 10 agents in our market, they were all closing more than 10 million, no, more than $20 million a year. Good, right? Okay, no worries. By 2007, we were number five. Number five in market share. Now, here's the really interesting thing about that. If you looked at number five in market share in a hot market and that, and that real estate agent was closing $30 million a year, at number five, when the market got better, you don't give back that market share. You're still number five, which means you're closing $30 million or more in business a year because you've taken market share away from somebody else. You can't increase market share without somebody else decreasing their market share. Do you understand that? If you increase your market share, somebody else's market share has to decrease. There's only 100%. Right. You can't add anything to this equation. And if you go from 10% market share to 12% market share, somebody else lost 2%. Well, Keller Williams Coral Springs has gone, and it's on my Facebook page, to 5.8% market share for Coral Springs Parkland in 2022. Now, before you say 5.8% is not really that impressive, there's 50 real estate offices that sell real estate in Coral Springs Parkland, 50. So 5.8% is actually not bad. By the way, we're at 4.2% a year ago, which means we increased our market share by 1.6%. Somebody else had to lose that. Every other broker in our market that's in the top 10 market share dropped. Every one of them. We're the only one who went up. Now, will we give that market share back? No, we won't. No. <laughs> we won't. And what you gain in a shift, you never lose when the market comes back. All right. Talk to me. What'd you hear?